And we begin tonight with an eyewitness investigation into the Hard Rock Hotel collapse. We are just learning that parts of the structure that collapsed did not match what the New Orleans permitting office approved. Eyewitness investigator David Hammer and our partners at the Times Speaking U, New Orleans Advocate, found several changes that are raising serious concern. John Zimmerman is a Pulitzer Prize winning reporter at the Times-Picayune New Orleans Advocate. He and I have been working together to investigate what might have caused the deadly Hard Rock Hotel collapse October 12th. I think people would like to know what happened that killed three workers on that site. Right, and I think it has bigger implications for construction projects like it all over the world. You know, they want to learn from the mistakes that may have been made here. We gathered thousands of pages of construction documents and shared them with Michael Lankin, a concrete engineering expert in Washington, D.C. And one of the things that we found is the decking. This is the kind of metal, corrugated metal pans that hold the concrete when it's poured in to make the floors. The pans that they're using are different than the pans that they uh, put in with their permit. Now this is the type of decking that was approved by City Hall in the plans. Three inch, 16 gauge VLI metal decking. As you can see, it has wide set grooves, three inches deep, and the plans call for pouring the concrete into those grooves and then adding another two and a half inches of it on top. But this is what they actually used, VersaDeck composite metal decking. It has more narrowly set grooves, inverted in shape, and this is a picture of it actually laid on the Hard Rock Hotel site. Section 2615 of the city code requires builders to get approval from the city permitting director in writing of any significant change like that. Our sources confirm no such request was ever filed with the city. Now the VersaDeck they used is actually designed to be better for spanning longer distances between support columns. So they went with the product that was better for wider spans, but that's not what they notified the city they were going to use. Even if the VersaDeck is better for wider spans, any deviation from the approved plans could have unintended consequences for other parts of the project. That obviously um, something failed. Um, we don't know. And Lankin wasn't just concerned about the vertical columns, but also supporting beams that run horizontally under the decking. Well, he was looking at, um, at beams that he didn't think are, are uh, wide enough or, or um, strong enough. And he had some questions from the pictures, from the video, the drone video, and, and a lot of the images that have come out, where are these cross beams that should be there? Yeah, you talked about that one where you can see at the corner that there's a connecting point of a vertical and a horizontal beam and there's no studs in there. And beyond that, how many other changes to the plan did they make without telling the city? I guess that's why he keeps saying, we don't know what they were doing up there. We don't know what they were building up there. That's right. Now, it's really important to know that these concerns are not necessarily what caused the collapse, but the mere fact that key parts of the building's design were changed without notifying the city is something that investigators are already looking into. Sure.